Right, let's see if this works. You know what, I think it is. I think that there's maybe some of this on the other side. Let's go around the other side. No, it's just really on there. I think I'm gonna count that as a half solution because I don't think that it's going to come off around the edges. <laughs> I've been scrubbing at it. So I'm gonna go back and look through all of your comments again and look for another solution to get those really stubborn areas uh, clean on the glass. And the, the problem is, is that I can scrub and it is coming off but it is glass and it's brittle and I'm, I'm afraid of breaking these panes and there's got to be another solution. So I literally, another solution. So <laughs> I'm going to go back and this will be sorted, but not today. There's plenty of other things that I've been doing though in the garden this morning and this afternoon. Storm Ali has whipped through the Isle of Man, so it's, it's really calm today. It's supposed to be back to a bit more wind tomorrow, I think, but it uh, has knocked down quite a few of my apples here, so I'm going to be collecting those. And then later in the week, I'm going to be doing a second video. So I've been debating whether or not to do a second video, and I'm just gonna try it and see how it goes and see how you guys like it. So with these videos, they, they tend to be more about me and my garden and, and having a look at projects and everything, but I wanted to do little videos that are focused on DIY and recipes and things like that. And since I have so many apples here, I was thinking that I would make an apple pie as the first small DIY video. Let me know what you think of that idea and if you would be able to tune in, say, this Thursday and uh, watch that video. So what I'm going to do today, as far as this video, is I'm going to collect these apples. I've got my basket here at the ready, take them inside, and then also, I am going to look at the arch over the gate coming into the garden here and um, also there's an area back behind the greenhouse here that I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do about. I really would like to use it as a composting area. A little bit concerned about the trees that are right there and their roots and them going into the compost pile but it does seem like the best place for it. So we're gonna have a look at that as well. It's a bit too wet to be cutting the grass, so it is a bit shaggy at the moment, apologies. And um, yes, I'm really excited to get stuck in here in the home garden. a snack as I'm collecting the apples. Now a lot of the apples have holes in them and I've spotted a few worms in them as well. The ones that are a bit too damaged I'm going to just move aside for the compost or whatever but the ones that have just a hole or two I'm going to chance it and take it inside and see if I can cut the little hole and any kind of damage any kind of worms out. Now I asked on social media what kind of apple tree do you think I have? Because to be frank, I had no idea. It was sweet. I'm actually enjoying this one right now. It has really crisp white flesh, relatively small, and some of them can get crimson on the outside, but there's often some patches of green. And a lot of people had ideas, and I'm really pleased to say that I think that we've narrowed it down that I have a discovery apple tree and I've wanted a discovery apple tree for some time. I tasted an apple 2014-ish and it, I remember it just being really sweet and slight tart aftertaste and that's exactly what this is. And so I had my fingers crossed and it seems that I've lucked out because I've inherited a discovery apple tree with this new house and it's a good producer as well. So this is going to be cherished not only this year, but the years to come. It's been a bit like an Easter egg hunt. 
but I've got all the windfalls, a few that I've picked from the tree as well, and then I've rounded up all of the icky ones, and they're here in some garden waste. Oh, we've got Louie. <laughs> so I've been working in the front garden today, and there's quite a bit of green waste already. I thought it was tidy to begin with, but actually no. And I don't have a compost pile yet, but it would be nice to have a space for some proper compost bays. And this area back here behind the greenhouse, it has kind of concrete steps going up to it and this little platform. And then that's the neighbor's fence on one side and then an, um, there's another neighbor on the back. But there's also lots of trees. So any kind of compost pile here, those nutrients would be very attractive to trees. So I've got kind of two ideas, either leave these concrete blocks where they are or lift them up and then put some kind of fabric down on top. To be honest, <laughs> you can actually see some roots there from the trees. I think it might be better just to start my compost on top of the concrete here. What do you think? There's a lot of wood lice under here. Let's see if there's any worms. One thing that I've been super excited about with this new house is that I have worms. I don't know if you know that, but at the allotment garden and also at the old house, I had a pest called the New Zealand flatworm and it decimates earthworm populations. So I've been trying to be careful with any of my pots or plants or whatnot and move them to the allotment rather than here because they tend to lurk in plant pots. And then if they got into my garden here, they could destroy my earthworms here too. Louie, you're crazy. <laughs> oh, they just love coming outside now. Hey. This garden arch. Now I love the idea of having it, but unfortunately the wood is falling apart. So just pulling on it and the wood will break or it just moves back and forth. It's not really sturdy. This side, look at that. <laughs> that is not going to last very long. So I'm going to have to take this down and put in a new one. state of the wood as far as the fence and the gate is concerned it it could be better but it's sturdy if I pull on it there's a lot of resistance and so it's gonna last a bit longer which is great because I didn't really want to replace all of this just another thing on the list of to do's but what I was thinking about doing is painting it and so I've picked up a type of fence paint when I got the arch and I'm just going to do a little bit of a test to see if it covers up this brown. I'm not sure that it will because it's a much lighter color. So this fence paint that I picked up, it's called natural stone and I hope that it works. It wasn't that expensive. Picked it up at a local DIY shop 
and it's a six year weatherproof for garden wood. So let's give it a go. What I'm thinking about doing is just putting some test patches on the back of this gate so it won't be as noticeable from the house in case I have to paint over it. But hopefully this stuff is gonna be the thing that fixes how this fence looks because I love the color. I picked up this paint at a local DIY shop and it's called Natural Stone and it's Cuprinol. It wasn't that expensive. I'm probably mispronouncing the brand name. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it does the trick because this is a good solid phantom gate here. All it needs is a lick of paint and I use Pinterest a lot for my gardening ideas and I found an amazing photo there of a patio similar in size to mine down here with a fence behind and it had this similar shade of paint. So I'm hoping that I can recreate a little bit of what I saw on Pinterest here at home. And I'm going to do just the back of the gate as a test because it's not as notice noticeable from the house and it, it can take two coats of paint. So I'll come back and do a second coat if need be. And then we'll know the verdict after that. It never fails to amaze me how a lick of paint can really transform a fence, a gate, a wall. It just freshens it up. And not only that, but this paint will protect this wood over the winter because it's going to be wet and cold and dark. And I'm not sure how long this wood has before it needs to be replaced, but the longer the better in my book starting a new garden or taking one over that's already established can be really daunting so whether it's a small garden like this or an allotment garden or something bigger and grander you just don't know where to start sometimes especially if someone else has already made their mark on it so i feel at least for me the best approach for something like this is to do big projects at a time and then fill in the details in between. So for me, it's putting in a new archway, painting this barrier fence. The next step is going to be a pathway back here. So these are big strokes on the canvas of my future garden. And then afterwards, I'll be putting in all the details and, and making it pretty, but it's putting in that foundation and what I want to avoid is a kind of a garden with things around the edges. And that is, that, is a, that is being afraid of the garden and being afraid to do something dramatic and individual. And that's not going to happen here. I really look forward to in the future a kind of before and after video. I'm planning that. So maybe this time next year, I'll do a before and after of the garden here, showing everything that I've done in between. And that's the other thing. That'll be a year from now. So project by project, taking your time, developing it as you go, looking and observing, seeing where the light is coming from, see how plants are doing. It takes time, but we're gonna get there. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you are interested in the second video that I have planned. So if that is successful, doing a, a smaller DIY video in the week, then that will be two videos a week that you'll get from Lovely Greens. So leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of my idea and I will see you on Thursday with some apple pie. Thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.